Well, it's time for our, our weekly um, book reading. And because the Last Dance featuring Michael Jordan's run to his last championship is so popular, uh, we decided that we would uh, do a Michael Jordan book. And this book is about salt in the shoes, and it talks about how uh, Michael rose from uh, a little boy um, to the star he is today. So, salt in the shoes. Um, one of the things unique about this book is it's written by uh, Michael's mother, uh, Dolores. Okay, Michael loved to play basketball. Every Saturday, he followed his older brothers, Larry and Ronnie, to the park, hoping that they would let him play. And if one of the guys who usually played with them didn't show, they always did. But there was one problem. His name was Mark. He was the tallest boy on the court. What's the matter, Mikey? Too short? Mark flapped his arms in Michael's face. Over here, shouted Larry. But when Michael threw the ball, Mark's long arms came out of nowhere and knocked the ball away. It flew in the hands of a player on Mark's team, and he made the basket. And the game was over just like that. Look at how big Mark is compared to Michael. Mark had those long arms, and Michael couldn't throw the ball around him. Um, but the Cougars were caught out of deflection. I'm really sorry, guys. If I were taller, that wouldn't have happened. All the way home, Michael apologized, even though no one was mad at him. His oldest brother, Ronnie, tried to cheer him up. Look, little brother, you played good today. Don't worry, we'll win the next time. Now on the right is a picture of Michael and his uh, two brothers. That's Michael in the middle, then his brothers, Ronnie and Larry. When they got home, Michael went into the kitchen where Mama was cooking dinner. He was still disappointed, and she could tell. You guys lost again today, huh? Michael nodded. He sat quiet, quietly for a minute, then said, Mama, how can I grow taller? Now, Mama knew the answer to a lot of the questions, but this was a tough one. She thought for a moment as she sprinkled salt and pepper on the chicken she was making for dinner. Then she smiled, looked at Michael, and said, Salt. Salt? Michael looked at his mama. Salt in your shoes. We'll put salt in your shoes and say a prayer every night. Before you know it, you'll be taller. See Michael sitting at the table? Even at a young age, he didn't like to lose. Michael had a good mama. Salt in my shoes, Michael said quietly to himself. Salt in my shoes, hmm. Surely mama was teasing. He sat staring out the window trying to figure out how salt was going to help him grow. He noticed the red rose bushes outside in Mama's garden. They had grown high along the fence and roses of all colors were blooming on the vines. He thought to himself, I remember when Mama first planted those bushes. Michael's face lit up. If Mama knows how to make those ro rose bushes grow taller, then maybe she's right. Maybe salt in my shoes will really help me grow. So let's see, fertilizer, uh, water, and sunshine makes the rose bushes grow. So how will salt in the shoes make Michael grow? Growing more excited, Michael twirled the basketball around and started asking lots of questions. Mama, how long will it take? How tall do you think I'll get? Smiling, Mama sat down next to him and explained, in order for this to work, the most important things you have to do are be patient, listen to what I tell you, and say your prayers every night. Listening carefully, Michael shook his head. Okay, Mama, I'll be patient, but what does saying my prayers have to do with it? Everything, Michael, re Mama replied, and she hugged him. Now go wash up and tell your brothers and sisters to get ready for dinner. Michael dashed out of the kitchen, almost knocking over his father who was walking in. What's he up to now? asked Daddy. Oh, the usual, laughed Mama. Chasing the dream. Even as a little boy, Michael was chasing that dream. So be patient and say your prayers. There's already two great lessons that we're learning. Later, during dinner, Mama noticed that Michael was barely eating anything. He was already daydreaming about being taller. 
Michael, first things first. You won't grow if you don't eat, especially your vegetables. But I'm not really hungry. Raising her eyebrows, Mama gave him a stern look. Slowly, Michael picked up his fork and began to eat. Minutes later, his plate was clean and he was asking for more. That evening at bedtime, <clears throat> Michael set his favorite game shoes on the floor next to the growth chart hanging on the wall. Then he put on his pajamas, said his prayers, and jumped into bed. Now I want you to look at those three things. Actually, there's four things going on in that right picture. Michael's on the floor praying. You see his game shoes against the wall underneath the, um, uh, his growth chart. And then look at his basketball. Now, do you think Michael loved basketball? He loved basketball so much that's all he thought about. When Mama came in, Michael was fast asleep. By the look on his face, she could tell he was already playing basketball in his dreams. Standing by his bed, Mama sprinkled salt in his shoes, then she prayed quietly over him as she did all her children. So look at Mama. Mama's got some salt and she's sprinkling that salt inside Michael's shoes. But look at that, how many of you out there have a, a growth chart? Something that you hang on your wall and you can walk up next to it and see how tall you are. And look at Michael in his bed, sleeping with his basketball. You think he loved basketball? Dear God, please help Michael be the best he can be and to give his best in all that he does. And Lord, could you please make him just a little bit taller tomorrow than he is today? Thank you. Amen. That was Michael's mom, Dolores, praying for him before she went to bed that night. After that night, Michael wore his favorite game shoes everywhere he went, even to church. And he stopped going to the park with his brothers on, on Saturdays. Instead, he stayed home and practiced. He wanted to grow a few more inches before he went back to the park. Look at Michael at church with those red game shoes on. And instead of going to the park, having to play against uh, Big Mark every Saturday, he stayed home and practiced. Practice, practice, practice. After two months of practice, practicing and waiting patiently and praying, Michael stood next to the growth chart on his wall. Nothing. He hadn't grown an inch. He was disappointed, but he didn't stop believing. I just got I just got to give it more time, like Mama said, Michael thought to himself, and that's what he did. Two more months of practicing went by and still nothing. Now Michael was becoming a little sad. Not only had he not grown one inch, but he also missed playing basketball with Larry and Ronnie. And by the only thing he didn't miss was being picked on by Mark. When the next Saturday came, his brothers tried to get Michael to go with them to the park, but he wouldn't budge. Mama had begun to worry. When she saw Michael sitting alone, sitting alone on the steps, she said to Daddy, maybe you should go out and talk to him. Michael was so consumed with getting taller, and after about four months he hadn't grown, he was getting a little bit disappointed. So that's Mama standing there with Daddy, and she wants Daddy to go talk to him. So Daddy went out and sat down with Michael. What's wrong, son? You haven't gone to the park with your brothers for a while now. Are you okay? Michael didn't say anything at first. Then he looked at Daddy and said, I thought I would be at least a few inches taller by now. I did everything Mama told me to do, but nothing's happened. Michael, why do you want to get taller? Daddy asked. If I was taller, I'd be a great player and I could help our team win, Michael answered. But you are a great player, son, and you already have everything it takes to be a winner. Right in here. And Daddy tapped Michael right on his chest. Being taller may help, help you play a little better, but not as much as practice, determination, and giving your best will. Those are the things that make you a real winner. Michael thought about what Daddy said for a minute, then suddenly he jumped up and took off. Where are you going, Daddy yelled after him. I got a game today and I'm late. Michael yelled back. See, Michael's daddy told him the most important thing. It's not how tall you are. It's your determination and your dedication and how badly you want to win. And the most important thing is practice, practice, practice. 
you. Daddy went out and motivated Michael, and what did Michael do? He jumped up and ran to the park to find Ronnie and Larry, and he was gonna go after Mark. When Michael reached the park, the game had started. He sat on the bench hoping he would get a chance to play, and he did. The game was almost over, and the score was tied when John, one of the guys on Michael's team, fell and hurt himself. Here was Michael's chance. Michael joined his team in the huddle as they gathered on the sideline for a timeout. Okay, the game's tied. All we need is one point. Who wants to take the shot? Ronnie asked. He looked at Michael's direction, feeling more confident than ever. Michael said, I'll do it. So here was Saturday. Michael's at the park with Ronnie and Larry. John, one of his friends on his team, goes down with a sprained ankle. They huddle up and they ask, who wants to take this shot? Michael wanted to take the shot. I can't wait to see what happens. When the whistle blew and the game began, Mark began to pick on Michael as usual. Still trying to play with the big boys, huh? Mark taunted. But Michael paid him no attention. Taller or not, he had been practicing. And today he was determined to win. Larry threw the ball in bounds to Michael. Michael caught it, bounced it for a moment, then took off running. Look at how much taller Mark is than Michael. And then over here, you can tell Michael's getting ready to go to work. As he approached Mark, Michael shifted to his right. Mark followed. And while he was still shifting, Michael spun back to his left. He stepped behind Mark and shot. The ball arced far above his opponent's hands and fell silently through the hoop. Two points. The game was over. Michael's team had won. It was just as Michael had dreamed. When he realized what he had done, Michael took off running and didn't stop until he reached home. Look at Michael. Now he hadn't been to the park for a few weeks with his brothers, but what had he been doing? He had been home practicing, practicing. So when that moment came for Michael to deliver the game winning shot, he was ready. Why was he ready? Because he had been practicing. Bursting through the door, he shouted, I did it. I did it, Daddy, I did it. I shot right over the tall guy's head and we won the game. Running in behind him, run, Ronnie and Larry joined the celebration. That's right, little brother, you did it. You won the game for us. Michael remembered the look that Ronnie gave him during the last time out of the game and said, no, we won the game, but I was the star and they all laughed. After that day, Mama stopped putting salt in Michael's shoes, but Michael didn't stop being patient working hard and praying. And that's a great family, isn't it? Ronnie and Larry were his older brothers. Mom and Daddy were his support base. Uh, they, they made Michael understood the importance of patience and praying and practicing. That's the three Ps. We just came up with the three Ps. Patience, practicing, and prayer. And if you do that, in practice and have God given a building like Michael had, guess what you become? You become Michael Jordan, the All-Star. That's a great book. So remember, practice, patience, and prayer. Um, so when you watch The Last Dance this Sunday, remember where it all started, right here with salt in the shoes. See you later, kooks.